It's time for Twig This Week at Google. Jeff and Gina are here. Matthew Ingram, too, from the Lake House. We're going to talk about the latest Google news, including self-driving taxis. It's all next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 213, recorded August 28th, 2013. Jiving with Jarvis. This Week in Google is brought to you by 99designs, the world's largest graphic design marketplace. 99designs connects businesses seeking quality, affordable designs with a community of more than 225,000 graphic designers. Visit 99designs.com slash twig to receive a free power pack upgrade worth 99 bucks. It's time for This Week in Google, the show that covers Google, the cloud, Facebook, Twitter, anything that we really want to talk about, basically. So when you have a panel like this, you don't hold them back. You talk about Chipotle and Glee, too. Gina Trapani is here from SmarterWear.org, founding editor at Lifehacker. She's the author of Think Up, which is a great Twitter analytics program. And uh, To Do Text, a great To Do Text program. Hi, text-based Hello. To -do. Hello, Hello, Gina. good to see you. A new update to do, do, do text uh, this week. Oh, good. And I was, I was actually just looking at the developer console, and I have zero crashes <gasps> and zero ANRs, and ANRs an application not responding in the three days that it's been out, <gasps> which is like, ah, oh, the heavens That's open. cool. So there's exciting. instrumentation that uh, it's, you're automatically notified if a program crashes or has a yep, problem. Yep, I see the, the version of the Android, the version of the app, and the, the device that it's running on. So oh, I can, that's really cool. So I can, uh, you know, test and, and reproduce, which is really nice. That's really cool. Yeah. Neato. Thanks. Jeff Jarvis is also here, buzzmachine.com. He is the author of Public Parts. He's in his office at the City University of New York, where he labors to teach the tenets of journalism to a bunch of callow youths. And greed. <laughs> and greed. <laughs> and it's an exhausting job. Uh, also here from Giga Ohm, one of its most senior editors, great guy too, Matthew Ingram, at his lake cabin. I'm so jealous. Hey, Matthew. Hi, everybody. Good to have you back. Thanks for having me. Is everybody running out and buying a new no, Nexus 4? Huh? I'm jealous that Matthew has obviously has good bandwidth at his cabin. <laughs> are you on 4G or something, Matthew, or are you, do you actually have internet there? This is internet. It's a high-speed microwave from a tower across the lake. <laughs> so you can go there anytime you want and work. Considering yep. that you have the choice between taking a rope swing and like go, like jumping into the lake and sitting on Skype here with us, <laughs> we appreciate I'm, it. I, I'm really honored should, that you joined, decided to join you us. You should be. Yes. Very should grateful. Be. We'll make this painless and quick. <laughs> <laughs> so I interrupted you, Leo. Sorry. Well, I'm just saying. I noticed. There you go. There's your Nexus Four. Uh, so about one a month ago. So cheap. About one a month ago. I did too, Matthew. Isn't that funny? I, I finally broke down and bought one, and now they've dropped the price. Me too. To Two hundred bucks for the eight gigabyte, which you don't. I don't think you, you know want. What? Eight you know what? You still got deals. You yeah, it's still yeah, cheap. That's true. That's true. And uh, it'll be I what two fifty. I went back and forth between the S4 and the Nexus. And, and finally went for the next one. I think you made the right choice. The, X, the S4, I've kind of given up on. Just There's so much Samsung stuff on it. Yeah, that's what I didn't want. Yeah. And I like the the updates. Yeah, 4.3. You're I already at 4.3. Yeah. I, I like it, in fact, so much that I decided not to put my launcher. Normally, I put Nova Launcher on all my Android devices, but just to do really pure Google. Really? Yeah, and yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's They've like the come a long phone. way, baby. Yeah, Jelly, yeah. Jelly Bean's I got very my usable. Moto X. Oh, oh you and you and the you Moto X. It. Now what? But, now what? Now what do you but, hate? I, no, no. I well, I now haven't opened it, hate. but I need I need your advice. I went into the store to look at it to say if I fall in love with it, I'll open it. And if I don't, I'll send it back. Right. I'll wait for the Nexus Five or whatever, or I'll get the Moto X eventually. But I'll that way, you have right. to get a black or a white one, right? Yes, I do. Yes, yeah. I do. And a 16 gig, not a 32 gig. But here's the thing: the screen to me and my old failing eyes looks weird this the text like has a blue cast around it like a blue drop shadow on. have you not used a, an amoled screen before is that the issue leo well i, I don't know you know i saw your post on google plus and i looked i immediately went to my 
Moto X, which has since been returned. I had a loaner. Uh, and I didn't see any shadow. And a lot of commenters on your post say, what are you talking about? So maybe there's yeah, a Yeah, but then there was a lot of trouble what kind of screen it was. Uh, somebody said it could be my glasses, which I think is the case. So I, I went to the store today just before the show and looked again. I took my glasses off and looked, and I didn't see it so much. And then I compared in, in the AT&T store my Nexus 4 and the HTC One and the Moto X one after the other. And the Moto X is just many times brighter white. Yeah, it's, and, it's of the three that you just mentioned, the only uh, AMOLED screen. And so I guess that has maybe it has some impact on my on my correction or something like that. Could but be. there's this weird blue haze around the letters. I would like, look like at a set, blink. but you've looked at several different ones, right? I mean, it's not yes, it's all of yes, them do now. the same thing, yeah. Yeah, and they're not. Somebody said on my post, well, it's been burned in. Well, no, it's been there for one day. I would say so. don't get that then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say. I don't yeah. see it, and then uh, I, apparently no, not it's not common. But uh, if you see it, you shouldn't get it. The Galaxy Nexus, I didn't like very much because uh, I thought it was a substandard screen. I've kind of come around on that. Um, you mean the Nexus Four? I mean, what did I say? Yeah, the Nexus Four. Yeah. The the best screen out there is still probably the HTC One. But 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 there, boy, the difference in brightness of the white was amazing. Well, but it might be more natural. What AMOLED yes. does so well is contrast ratio. Blacks are blacker mm. than any and any other kind of screen, and whites are whiter. Their contrast ratio is amazing. On Do AMOLED. I dare ask this? What does AMOLED mean? <laughs> Organic light emitting diode, OLED, is ah. different from LCD. So most of these other screens are LCD screens, which means they have a shutter, which lets light through. So they're backlit, and the light comes through, and the shutter opens and closes, and, and it does colors, you know, that way. OLED screens are actually direct view. They're emitting the light. The, each cell, each pixel has its own, is emitting its own light. There's no backlight. And so they tend to be brighter. They're also more efficient. And one of the things mm. uh, the Motorola is taking advantage of is the fact that you could turn on individual pixels without turning on the backlight as that you do it. now explains it. You know such neat yep. stuff. You know that? Well, then that's why you oh, have that hovering, stuff. you know, that pulsing wake up, you know, the uh, while it's sleeping, oh, yep. it's, you know, because they don't have to turn on the whole screen. And so it uses, it sips it uh, juice. The other thing that you should know that's about OLED screens sure. is when they're black, they don't use any power. So you always want to use a black theme <laughs> for best battery life. I'm so glad you asked, Jeff, nice because honestly, screen. I did not know this. I appreciate the explanation. <laughs> I thought everyone knew that. <laughs> I, you know, it's one of those things where, yeah, hardware just never. Not interesting, uh, huh? I don't, yeah, not, not as interesting. But when no. you explain it, Leo, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, back in the day when, when I, you know, many years ago, my child was listening to Twit, and they would get going in some kind of thing about a TV, something, you know, going on with video drivers, that kind of stuff. <laughs> just, oh, no. You're talking about tech TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video drivers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny? Yeah. They, it's, it, one of the reasons it's interesting you ask that is I just got the first OLED television set. Um, mm. LG well, and it. it's coming tomorrow. LG and oh. Samsung are selling uh, for the first time. OLED-based screens. You know, all our screens now have been plasma or LED, uh, LCD. So you need to invite six people to your unboxing. I have a lot of people coming over. <laughs> Robert <laughs> Heron from uh, Revision 3 says, can I review it? I said, yes. Yeah, Scott Wilkins is flying up to calibrate it. <laughs> wow. A lot of geeks are into this. Um, How much are they? 9,000, which is... <laughs> the way they got me, that's the TV right there. The way they got me... 9,000. ...is that the LG is 15,000. So I thought, oh, this is a great deal. It's curved. <laughs> it's wow. curved for no apparent reason, yeah. <laughs> wow. Because they can. Because they can. So it's more energy efficient and Much the blacks are better. Blacks, are, well, and Consumer Reports has already reviewed this particular thing, and they say it's the best HD TV we've ever reviewed with the best mm. contrast radio, the best ratio, the best blacks, uh, the best whites and all For nine that. grand. I mean, you know. What people complain about OLED, and of course Samsung uses its super AMOLED screens uh, on the Galaxy S4, uh, is they, that it's un, uh, inaccurate. So, for instance, the, the HTC One is more accurate. It, that's why the, you know, the white isn't quite as bright or the colors are maybe a little more, more accurate. But I don't think accuracy in a screen this size is all that important. No. So the fact that it's bright and easy to read, to me, is more important and crisp and better on battery life. Just makes it, makes it, makes it better. So, so you thought I was just going to complain about the most. I did. Here we've had a nice lesson. <laughs> I did. Educational <laughs> I thought you were going to whine some more. It was such a teaching moment. So did you get it? Did you? So he, you're still undecided. 
it's 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 still sealed at home. Yeah, which is very hard for me. <laughs> Jeff, you you you're so slow to make these decisions. I I appreciate how much thought you put into them. Um, but you know, every look, every single purchase like this is a, there's trade offs, right? Like you're never gonna get the yeah. perfect, mm -hmm. you know. The there's I keep well, saying no. that there's not. I've yet to see the perfect smartphone. No, well, if, if we arrive there, then it's good. Well, Apple thought we had it, but we didn't. Um, Actually, our, our mobile guy, Kevin Toffel, was going to get an HTC One because he was seduced by the, you know, hardware and so on. And he actually uh, either sold it or, uh, and he's getting the Moto X. Yeah, Kevin really likes the Moto X. Yeah, he said it's the ultimate Android phone as far as he's concerned. I would say that's pretty close to true. It is almost a pure Android experience, and the, the places where it's not are the advantages of the camera twist the wrist camera and the you know always the wake up thing and stuff like that and every other respect it's very pure google experience okay, right it's like progressive enhancement based on sort of specialized hardware right right, mm. right. Mm. Yeah. yeah and i do like the um i do you know I, I like how it feels in the hand which is hard to describe you know you can't describe it you have to just go try it it really feels of all the phones the best for some reason there's something about it it's a little smaller yeah, I was concerned maybe I've gotten so used to a big screen. Well, it's 720p, noticeably? too, which is a dis disadvantage. Yeah. It's not that small a screen, but it goes almost edge to edge. So it, the overall How's device the battery is life really running. Excellent battery life, which I think I think watch carefully what Apple does uh, in a couple of weeks, because I suspect that's going to be one of the chief new features that people aren't really talking about on the new iPhone is battery life. Better battery life. Yeah. Yeah. So the rationale of the Nexus 4 for $100 less, if this were Apple reducing price, they're getting rid of stock, and it means, oh, something new is coming. But that's not the way it seems here. They, they, uh -huh. they did it all around the world. I think there's a. So I like think you could pretty much say there's a Nexus 5 just around the corner. Yeah, there's a Nexus oh, yeah. 5 around the corner, I yeah. think you could pretty much oh, say yeah. that. But we don't know anything about it. There haven't been any leaks, have there? Not, no, not that I'm no, aware of. No, there have been a lot of speculation. Although I, I, missed a, a triple, uh, I missed all about Android last night, so... I'm I'm behind on my Android news, but no, I don't think so. Yeah, Gina is one of the hosts of All About Android. That's why we we look to her for that information. <laughs> you know, Kevin just wrote on Giga Ohm. Uh, I got a lot. I got, I got Kawasaki. Every time I say anything about the Moto X, for some reason, I think that's changing now. But people for a while thought I knew something, which I didn't. But every time I said something, uh, it would get quoted a lot. And Guy Kawasaki sent me off. A, why did you say it was only three hundred fifty dollars to make? And uh, I said, I didn't. That was uh, Goldman Sachs said that. And I was quoting them. Well, now, according to Kevin Toffel and IHS, IHS uh, does this kind of assessment of what the, the components down. are, a teardown, and, and, and a guess at what it must cost. IHS says, no, it ain't 350 bucks. It's $221. Mm. Or $226. Depends on the... Yeah, that's a good price. And it's one of the reasons I think maybe... Uh, I'm surprised that Google doesn't offer this as the Nexus 5 or something like it. Well, then they'd undercut... No, they can't, can they? Yeah, yeah. Carriers. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. And actually, if you think that seems awfully low, that's actually right in the... Uh, according to IHS, the iPhone is 207 bucks, a little less. The Galaxy S4, 237 bucks, a little bit more. So it's right in the... Right in there. In that range. So the developer so what's the versions? rationale? Go ahead, Gina. I was just going to ask when the developer version of uh, of the Moto X Any is minute, right? be available. Any minute, right? Soon, is, right? And, yeah, and yeah. there will be a, a Google Play edition? No. Or there will not? There, there will not. not. No. Okay. No. okay. It doesn't make there sense for them to do it. There will just be a developer unlocked. Yeah. Right, because the extra features take advantage of the hardware. It's so right. pure as it is. You would you, you, By buying a Google edition, you'd just be stripping useful stuff out without any But game. they will have developer editions. Yeah, and all that means is un unlock bootloader. Unlock bootloader, right. yeah. And the words "developer edition" on the back, <laughs> which is kind of yeah. cool. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get one for one of my developers, and I want to get the, you know, the developer edition. But I want, so I'm holding out on it. It will be also a 32 gigabyte, and uh, they, they're, we're starting to see the off contract prices now, right? Um, 629 bucks, I think it was something like that. Mm -hmm. 674 with tax and delivery. Ooh, yeah. But again, this is kind of normal, and. I, I guess the only reason that, that you might say, well, it should be less, is it's 720p screen. It's not the super high-res screen. I don't know if that makes a difference. Well, is it that there, here, here's, here's the, but here, is it a bit of price fixing, just to be provocative, in that because of their conflict of interest and channel conflict, 
they don't want to undercut HTC and Samsung at all too right. much. Right, right. Yeah, right. They have to pay attention to that. They want to keep these other guys happy, I think. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, and then the issue is, of course, of the Android version. I think you're going to get Moto X to 4.3 very quickly. I don't think that's a real problem. Um, although, you know, the HTC developer edition, the HTC One, is now at 4.3, right? Or 4, isn't it? Yeah, the Google Play edition, the Google Play edition did yeah. get the update. Yep, yep, which was so, nice. HTC said we're going to do it fast, and they did. And they did. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, I'm sorry that we got into an Android discussion. We should defer that to all about Android, but it is kind of a big part of Google's business. Yeah, it's a bit, yeah well, it is. Definitely. It is. Just, a, just a little tiny just a part. Little tiny but, but, but interesting. Oh, we're getting a little echo from you now. I don't know what that's... Who's that coming from, Chad? Is that me? I haven't Better. isolated yet. We're Okay, we're working to isolate that. As <laughs> soon as we've triangulated it... There's three guests that we'll it could be a, coming a from. We'll send a team out uh, to handle it. <laughs> Here's a product I like. The Robocar. Apparently, uh, according to uh, Jessica Lesson's blog, um, Amir Efrati writing, Google has started to talk to people who build cars. They, they're contract manufacturers, not the big names you know, but people who build cars for other people about building self-driving cars. No one's talking, but they've been talking to Continental AG and Magna International to manufacture a Nexus car. I hope they call it Nexus. What one? What one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, put the alone, I put the I Nexus on, one. but I think that if if if, if it's if Google should name everything that's a Google edition should be a Nexus, right? The yes. Ne yeah. The yes. Nexus. And it only comes car. in primary colors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I hope it's like that Tesla that uh, was it Larry or Sergi was driving. The Remember Batmobile. The had yeah, the Batmobile <laughs> and had the Chrome logo on the. <laughs> Um, but what's interesting, it would be self-driving. Well, the other report, a rumor, is that they would actually build instead a, a fleet of self-driving taxis. Taxis. Mm -hmm. Right. They could do both. Yes. I love the idea of self-driving taxis. Yeah. And, uh, and apparently Uber is interested in, uh, in, in acquiring the these. investment. <laughs> right. The Mongo investment. Um, and the robot would have to take you to Brooklyn. You know, most, yeah, uh, exactly. Right. All cars lead to Brooklyn. Uh, at f according to this article, at first, robo taxis would require the human in the car to sit behind the wheel in case of emergency. So they would just talk then, right? To you. Well, I I don't know if this is legal or what, but I hope they do this. That would be very cool. Well, meanwhile, the war is coming up. The next story in the rundown is that Nissan is saying, not so fast, Google. Mm. We are going to build mm. self-driving cars, too. Really? Yes. But really, I mean, is that, you know, I mean, I assume they are, but their target seems incredibly ambitious. Um, I mean, you can't just whip up a self-driving car. I'm I assuming. think it's not whipping it up, Matthew, because I think all of the manufacturers have been looking at this for some time. Yeah, I guess yeah. they probably GM yeah. had a concept car two years ago at CES that was an urban transport, autonomous urban transport vehicle. Uh, I rode around and it was very cool. It only had seats for two. Uh, and I said, well, what if, you know, what if you have a family? They said, well, it's autonomous. You just get a few more and you daisy chain them. <laughs> and they just drive, they go wherever you're going. That's like oh that that that's 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 the the uh, further rendition of we can look it up real quick Chad the Homer, the Homer, Homer is the right, ugliest the car Homer, I ever saw. Yes, yes, <laughs> Somebody's yes. making the Homer, right? No, Homer Simpson's car. Yes. Hmm. Well, so I don't know how serious they, they are. There were, there were two bubbles, and so the kids were the other bubbles. So you didn't yep. have to hear them. They had leg irons. <laughs> uh, it had shag carpeting and uh, as many go. cup holders as you could imagine in heaven. Here's the actual. The Here's the, yeah, like I, uh, here's the actual Homer uh, car. Um, <laughs> somebody has built it, and I think they're going to start selling wow. it. Wow. No. Well, I don't know. They don't, <laughs> I don't see how there you go. There's a model version. Here's the full-size no. version. <laughs> <laughs> no. Kind of. It's just a modified uh, something. I like the nice. Bentley grill or whatever, the yeah. Rolls-Royce grill. Maybe it's a Rolls-Royce. Um, I, you won't catch me driving that thing around. There's the Homer, ladies and gentlemen. The horn, uh, there are three horns because Homer says you can never find a horn when you're mad. And they all play, of course, 
La cucaracha, la cucaracha. No, 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 no. <laughs> Gigantic cup holders. <laughs> um, powerful like a gorilla, yet soft and yielding like a Nerf ball. Designed for the average man. The team at, believe it or not, there is a company called Porky Beamer Motors has built one. It's a race car. They're going to race it at the 24-hour of Le Mans. Not Le Mans. Le Mans, which is at Button in Buttonwill, Buttonwillow, California, not France. <laughs> Buttonwillow? Buttonwillow. I don't know where that is, and I live in okay. California. 24. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I wasn't pronouncing it right. Lemons, L-E-M-O-N-S, the 24-hour of Lemons. <laughs> now, now I get it. See, this is what's going to happen now with this week in Google. When they start making cars, we're going to become auto week. We become mm -hmm. phone park. We're everything now. The closest airport. Not enough cup holders. <laughs> More cup holders. <laughs> Actually, Wasn't the head of GM who said no matter what they do to their cars or Ford, no matter what features they add, the number one criticism is More not enough cup, cup holders. holders. You cannot have enough cup holders. That is the silliest thing ever, right? So my new car, which comes in two weeks, three weeks, something like that, has Google Earth as its map. Get out. Get out of here. Does Google Maps kind of Earth car? ship with most cars at this point? No. Or is it usually the car's nav system? So I was thinking about, like, Google building self-driving cars versus Nissan building self-driving cars. And this is where mm -hmm. Google's, like, brand trust, like, plays such a big role, right? Because Google has been navigating me around... Right whether I'm on foot or on exactly. my bike or in my car, for a long time now. So I trust Google to get me where I need to go because they've been doing it, right? Because Maps is everywhere. Well, um, so I'd just, almost be more directions. likely to choose the Google car. That's a good car, point. That's a good right? point. I think that's a really important point. And the trust is not just directions. It's also trust really in technology. At some point, mm -hmm. you yes. understand how a car car works and the brakes work or whatever. Okay, it's physical. But to get to the smarts that are necessary to make a safe self-driving car, who are you going to trust? Right. Mm. Yeah. Google's yeah. the moonshot company. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You don't want I, Apple I, Maps in, in your GPS. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, Although, they, I should they, say there's a couple of companies who've shown that because they're putting Siri in, like, a lot of companies are putting Siri in their car. And who was right. it? We saw Apple Maps in what? It was a Chevy. It was one of the car companies. Has Apple Maps. So it's Google Earth that's coming with your new new car, not It has Maps. Google Earth. Yeah, I wonder why there's a distinction what kind between of car? Two It's an Audi. Uh, you have an Audi coming? I have an Audi coming. Ooh, which one? I ordered it in May. <laughs> Whoa. Jeez. <laughs> Is it custom? Or? Or? Well, apparently they're all custom. It's like, we will build mm -hmm. it for you when you give us $5,000. <laughs> then we'll talk. <laughs> That's for the doors. They have to drive it across the Atlantic. It takes a while. Are you gonna be Are you gonna be on vacation when your car shows yeah, up? That's so much. sad. Yeah, pretty much. Ah. You should have gone and done the pick it up in Germany. Stage. I should have. I really mm. wanted to, yeah. and I almost did actually. But then I thought, oh, I have a job. <laughs> so that kind of ruined that. Plus, it's I still can't figure out how you get it across the ocean. Just they build that into the price. <laughs> they do. We did that when I was a kid. We went to uh, really? was it Darmstadt in Germany to get our Volkswagen. Wolfsburg. 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 Mm -hmm. That's right. Went to Wolfsburg, got the Volkswagen, and uh, the, and then you have to arrange transport. And we came back on the uh, Queen Mary with the car in the hold. Really? Yeah. Wow. We cool. got a better deal because we were taking a car with us and, and and passengers. I guess it's it's fifty dollars for the extra bag. I don't know. I'm, this is 1967. Everything's changed. I have this vision of, of a different lifestyle for, for for Leo that you had your 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 nanny and your maids with you and we did, we did. This is crates of I had my belongings. my steamer trunks brought on by the boy. <laughs> <laughs> he has a little red hat. Um, no, it was much more like the Marx Brothers jammed into <laughs> the cabin. <laughs> uh, my dad was a professor, Jeff. You know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, speaking of which, did you get your Nexus 7 LTE version yet? No! No! I want it! It's for sale every day. Every damn day I search for Nexus 7 LTE. Can't you Way tell go, me Leo. when we're going to get it? No, and you now here's the latest indignity. It's for sale in 
Germany, the UK, France. I'm telling you, <laughs> France gets it first. What the hell's wrong here? How oh, dare they? They have Frenchies. That's so not... If you have friends in Germany, though, just get them to send No, because it's well, different frequencies. You don't to. want the German oh, right, version. You want right, the US yeah. version. Good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, We Leo. don't get stuff all the time in Canada. I'm pretty used to it. Right. You are. You are. <laughs> There's no, no point in getting a oh, Canadian riled yeah, up. You see that? That's the, yeah, that's the nice Canadian thing. Oh, go ahead, screw us, and we'll apologize for it. Sure, thank you. send it to We're us. We're not a like that down later. here, Ingram. <laughs> I you want get, my Nexus yeah, Matt, LTE. You really have to adopt the the American sense of entitlement <laughs> if you're going to be on Twig. That's right. Get with it. <laughs> Where's my Chromecast? I had this vision today that that that, that somebody with a sense of humor at Google would put it on for sale right now during the show, and I'd have to order it during the show. <laughs> I'll order it for you. I've gotten very good. At talking and ordering crap yes, at the same yeah. time. Yes, yeah. It's amazing. I can, like get, skill. I, can, I can get stuff like that. I put my credit card in all, you know, pre-filled and everything. Jeez. I just push a button. It goes. Brrr. That's uh, how you got four Chromecasts with four I Netflix codes. Five. Did you get five? Uh, and you got five Netflix uh, codes as well, right? I did. You, you got them early enough? Mm. I did. But now they say you can't use them all at once. But I think I'm believing that I can apply the next one in three months three and the next months. one in three months after that. They have not. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, nothing's been added to Chromecast. And in fact, something was just taken away. Well, uh, don't get, don't get, don't get your knickers in knots. Oh, good, good. And Ta everybody talk went me crazy down. on that story. Yeah. Everybody went crazy on that story. What's the name of the app that was uh, first about it? Allcast. What was it? Allcast. 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 It, it was Allcast. Aircast. He changed it to Allcast because of trademark reasons. And I think it's it's Kosh, I learned. He pronounced it's not it not Kosh? Oh. I, I was pronouncing it Kosh. It's Kosh. Ah, good to know. And so it suddenly wouldn't work. So there's, there's stories all over about how oh, Google's cutting this out. Google has a grand conspiracy. Google has this. Google has that. Well, it turns out. It's just that Google, it's a beta, folks, and it's mm -hmm. and they made a change, and it, it's not compatible right SDK. now, and they didn't do it on purpose. Yeah, yeah. that's well, it. Well, Co Koch kind of f fanned the flames by he saying did. that they had, he felt that they had intentionally right. uh, changed a particular parameter that he was using. He wasn't using the SDK, SDK by the way. He reversed engineered the protocol, so he was well, you know, completely going around. Uh, so they changed yeah. a little bit of the protocol, and he said they did it intentionally, and yeah, turned it into and turned it into a whole thing. And Google, it's on, it's on the, the rundown after, below that story, Leo. Uh, Google put out a statement saying, nah, it's okay. "Yeah, never mind." Sorry. No. Well, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. Although, uh, isn't it using Dial? Isn't it using this open source protocol called Dial, uh, which was why Koch could probably, you know, reverse it. I, I you know, it seems to be. From what I looked at, that everything Chromecast is doing is based on various open source technologies integrated. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't into. surprise me. Yeah. Well, well it, it, the Google Cast protocol, right? Maybe that's based on Dial. Based is, on Dial. is a is a yeah. similar, very similar open source uh, open standard. But I have yeah, a I mean, problem it's, with it's, Chromecast. It's strange that they're being so conservative and shutting down apps this early on or, like, not enabling streaming and video directly from your device to their Chromecast. I mean, what think, Coach did was very basic. I don't know why mm. well, they but, would but have... You're still, you're still their statement they said they were just down. screwing around with the SDK and changing things, and right. so yeah, it wasn't they, deliberate. They, they didn't... They are saying they didn't deliberately shut this down. They made a change, and that change had an impact on something that they didn't have any role in. This happens right. all gotcha. the time. So he probably, gotcha. he probably had hooks into it somehow, exactly. and they changed gotcha. the part this that happens he was hooking all, into. You know, you're a developer, Gina. This happens all the time. If you develop with a non-public with a non -public API, yeah, it's not this is Google's the fault if that yeah. changes underneath oh. you. Right. But, but, right. The, but, the, but the, it really is. It's a bad, I'm waiting for Matthew's post about this. Matthew will be writing this probably while he's <laughs> on the show. You can order things, Leo. He'll write... A 40-inch post on this. While we're on the show, I guarantee you, <laughs> because it's a journalistic issue here that he'll he'll ping it on. That is yes, right, Matthew. That is that the world. When I went through looking for the rundown and I went through the my Google search, there were stories everywhere about Google shuts down, Google shuts down, Google shuts down. Google, right, and nobody did any reporting. It's, this is the problem with our current tech press. Is nobody sat back and looked at something and called and said, "What's going on here, Google?" And when you do, gosh, amazing, fascinating things happen. Well, I think we're very. First of all, part of that is uh, cynical. You got to be in, in the blog world. You got to yeah. be first. You got to get the the headline. Yep. It's a much better headline to say Google shuts down Kosh Kush Kosh right. than it is to say, "Oh, Kosh used to Kush used an unpublished API and and it got changed out from underneath right. them." 
Uh, and of course, he fanned the, as you said, Gina, he fanned the flames by, fanned by, the flames, by yes. complaining yeah, about he, it. He framed the story that way. He said, I, I believe they did this intentionally. The biggest problem for me is a lot of the tech press isn't technical. And so mm -hmm. anybody who's technical, anybody who's, you know, we've seen this over and over again. APIs, unpublished APIs are always risky to use. It happens with Microsoft and Apple, too. If you use an unpublished API, you're running the risk that things will get changed and your stuff will not work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In fact, even if you use a published API. You yeah, sometimes that, that can happen. We've seen lots of startups, yeah. and they'll, you know, rely on Twitter's yeah. API or Amazon's API, and then go. they change it. There you go. Now, but, you know, Coach is kind of a rock star in the community, and people really look up to him and love his stuff, and he makes mm. really cool stuff. So I think we when he him. says, Google yeah. intentionally broke my app, that's what gets... How old is he, Next though? time, it's the he's boy He's probably a wolf. kid, right? I mean, how old he's is he? He's 11. He probably he's is. 11. He probably does. <laughs> He probably doesn't know that, you know, hey, knock it off, Google. It's fun for him. He's a one guy, one man army of he's amazing. He is amazing. But I think you're you know, to be to get serious about the journalism part, Leo, I think you're right that it is much more you're gonna get more page views, you're gonna get more people right. excited if you say yep. Google did something bad or Apple did something bad, yep. um, then you will kind of calmly explaining that something totally rational happened. And that's unfortunately, you know, the incentives are all mismatched like you're not going to get as meant but you maybe you've seen this too when you actually the, the one person who does go to the effort to do the reporting and to call google you know I, I don't report much anymore but when i do do that i get more attention to those posts than anything else they actually have substance in them and that's what people do end up passing around but you know so you can win true. in the that's end. true but you have sort of a hundred of the other one and then and then there's the one person yes. who writes the kind of debunking post and says just relax this is what really happened. And I, and I do find those have a lot of value, but it's usually like one to a hundred. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's right. aware. Any, everybody's a little cynical. Everybody's aware of, um, you know, a, how this is how money is made. And, uh, and, but I also think there's a kind of a dearth of technical, in, you know, information. There's certain blogs yeah. that you could trust that you know when a non-tech says something, Ars Technica, when John Syracuse says something, there's certain people that you just know when they say it that they're coming from a deep technical knowledge of the thing and they're not writing the... the, the and they probably don't generate as much traffic. Well, this Speaking of thing, which, right? we're going to come back and talk about twerking and Miley Cyrus in just a moment. But oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's, there's always that tension between explaining something in a way that's, like, grokkable by people who are interested but maybe not developers are highly technical... You know that you always. Mm -hmm. I, I always felt like a life hacker. I was worried about being too reductionist or too simplistic right. when explaining things. Uh, you know, but you want to explain enough. I mean, there's there's some of that, but you know. Definitely. But, but no, and I, you I guys agree always that. did a great job. I thought, like, I am not a super technical person. I mean, I know enough to get around, but I always thought life hacker hit that mark really well, where you explain enough to make it obvious that you know what you're talking about and to give people a grounding. You don't go into mind-boggling detail. And, Thank you. Thank you. I mean, the, the, the more technical posts would alienate kind of new readers, right? And like, and, and our and our goal was to bring in more readers. And, and as the time went on, the sites, you know, was like, we need to appeal more to our mainstream audience and bring more of an audience in. But, but you can, you alienate a technical audience with an oversimplified post right. and you scare <laughs> off new, you know, new readers who maybe aren't as technical with something that's too detailed. I mean, it's, it's a tough, it's just a tough line to walk. Not that I'm defending. Look, I'm not, I'm not saying that people shouldn't, you know, pick up the phone and call and find out what exactly happened and not take, you know, a well-known developer's word. I mean, he was obviously uh, offended and, and annoyed that his app that he had spent time working on broke, uh, but, you know, in this case. But, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a... He's meeting. It's a, it's a he's meeting with them. It'll, it'll work again. Google, it's in Google's interest to make it work. That's, that was why it was a surprising story. Just think about it. Why would they turn that off? Mm -hmm. yeah. Meanwhile, made, made no, I've got made, a complaint no sense. about Chromecast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it has nothing to do with the Moto X. Nothing to do with it. Yeah. And, uh, here's the problem. I mean, it does have a lot to do with my Pixel. So here I am using the God, the, the blessed Pixel, the Google blessed machine, and suddenly Chromecast stops working in uh, Google Play and Netflix. Doesn't show the icon. Doesn't show Jack in Chrome on my Chrome Pixel. It still works in YouTube. It still works on the top of the screen for for casting a tab, but I suddenly can't do Netflix or Play. I put this up online because somebody says, you know, one of the helpful user suggestions is, did you try installing the Chromecast app? <laughs> yeah, because I'm telling you it doesn't work. I just told you what it works in. But somebody else did the same thing with the Pixel and said, yep, same problem. Hmm. Hmm. 
So Google, hello. I'll try Google. it. I'll, I'll I'll try it at home tonight. As uh, you know, this, I have five Chromecasts. <laughs> 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 because you're so good at purchasing things while you're live broadcasting an announcement. It's, it's, Wait, it's there's kind a... of scary. It's scary. It's like there's Leo purchasing five Chromecasts, interacting with the chat room, running a show, doing an ad read. I just, <laughs> I just bought a house five minutes ago. I, <laughs> I don't it's need... like your aunt. It is. It like is the greatest radio guy skill. It is. It's I what used, you learn when you're in radio. You're doing 18 things at once. I used to be on with Ron Owens on yeah, Ron's a perfect San Francisco example. all the yeah. time. And Ron is a pro's pro. Yeah. And Ron would be sitting there. We were friends. So he'd be talking to me. And, and, and he'd have the, you know, my, his mic on mute. He's betting he's on horses about, during the show. I'm thinking, how is he doing this? How is, and then he, and once in a while, he'd just put up his hand and, and, he, and he'd hit the mic and he'd say, why do you say that? Turn it back off. You've got to come back to me. <laughs> and then he's got, his, <laughs> he's got his pager out and he's going, uh, Miley Cyrus in the fourth. Yeah, I like that. I like that horse. Yeah. It's got a nice rear. So, um, let's see. Surgeon live streams operation using Google Glass. I, I'm, so, I'm not going to that doctor. I don't that. want that to happen. A surgeon from Ohio State, Wexner Medical Center, donned the new headset during routine. It was routine surgery last week. And streamed up. And he's sh I'm not routine. My <laughs> every every operation is critical. <laughs> You're right. It was to uh, medical students. This happens all the time. I'm not a fan of this either. When you're in surgery in the or you're in the hot. It's worse when you're in the hospital and, and 15 med students come in, and then they start <laughs> they start probing you and saying, "Now, what? Yeah. Do you, why do you think Leo's pain is in his left side? What do you think that means? Anybody? Anybody? That's what you don't want." Now they're doing it with Google Glass. He also consulted with a separate colleague through the headset. First time a live point of view collaboration has ever occurred during an operation using glass. That's an interesting thing. You know, well, do you see what I'm seeing? What is that? Is that a spleen or is that the liver? I don't. I think that's a great idea. I mean, I don't know if I would want it to be me, but particularly if you're a teaching hospital, yeah, I would I think agree. that would be fascinating. Yeah. Uh, he was performing ACL surgery, which is. It is pretty routine knee surgery. Pretty routine, yeah. Um, the, he says, uh, to, he, glass didn't get in the way. To be honest, once we got into the surgery, I often forgot the device was there. That makes sense. You People who have glass, Gina and, and Jeff, you report that, right? You just get, it just yeah. blends no, in. Not me. Yeah. Not, not no? if you wear glasses, no. No, it's always. Not if you wear glasses. Constant. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're constantly having to readjust it. And the surgeon it. does wear glasses, but he decided not to for this operation. <laughs> no, nice. I don't know. <laughs> Um, apparently, the medical now, center has a chief innovation officer, Dr. Clay Marsh. So, you know, there you go. This is some innovation right there. That's what happens. Another innovation that's on the right now I love is Shriners Hospital is using glass to try to get disabled kids on wheelchairs yeah. to be able to navigate their wheelchairs. Oh, that's that's fascinating. Cool. Oh, neat. That's, that's really cool. great. These are the good uses of glass. Like for all the, the way yes. that people make fun of them for looking crazy and turning all of us into cyborgs, you know, all of us into cyborgs and privacy. Like the, this is... These are the kind of applications of glass that, that are really going to matter. And there's quite a few of them. I mean, uh, Trey, Trey Ratcliffe's taking uh, people who can't get out of the house on photo uh, walks. That's great. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, that's, that is that's awesome. awesome. Um, so, yeah, I hear a lot of these applications, and I think they're really Meanwhile, I was looking at Field Trip even. Remember when we were first talking yeah. about Google Glass and I had been in Italy, you know, I was looking at Field Trip um, and just – the way I could pull up information about the thing you're looking at would just be hugely, yeah. like, I'm not sure I would use it all the time, but if you're in a strange place, it would be fascinating. I'm going to Venice in a couple of weeks. Do you recommend I put Field Trip on my phone and turn it on? Yes, definitely. I turned it off. I used to have it. <laughs> it kept annoying me because there's a place down the road where Peggy Sue Got Married was filmed. So every oh, yeah, the filming locations are pretty noisy. Yeah, yeah, it's like, okay, I know that. I don't really care. I walk by that house every single day. <laughs> It'd be nice if you could say ignore, you know. Yeah. But I yeah. think for a new city, yeah, it's not intended for that. It's intended for yeah. your, your, your yeah, new places. New yeah. place. So I'm, I'll turn it on in Venice. I think it'd be pretty cool. That's Maybe you just idea. wear head earbuds or something, right? Yeah. That'd be almost I like turned it on up here. There was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't go now it should road. be... <laughs> Here is I Matthew zoomed out like 50 cabinet. miles. <laughs> this guy named Jeff Jarvis, uh, he has 2.6 million people circle him. So he, he must be a bigwig of some kind. Has been using Auto Awesome 
This was fun yesterday. To show off the fact that he was at the U.S. Open, you lucky dog. How fun. And so, what are you? How are you doing this? You're you're pressing. Uh, you're doing a. I'm using my. I'm using an Nexus One. I mean, Nikon One, and just holding it down, and it's putting the sequences in. But oh. you don't know what's going to do. So there were some odd ones that didn't work, but that's Tommy Haas, uh, yesterday. This is really cool. And it kind of worked well. Yeah, it's really neat. So, and, and I made fun of the Guardian for you, the idea of using, and that's that's his opponent. Uh, uh, what's his name? There's some really auto interesting auto. So this is for people who don't know the auto awesome feature of uh, Google Plus Photos, where if it sees a number of pictures were taken in rapid succession, it'll turn them into an animated GIF, which is pretty cool. It's a really cool. I, I, I take a bunch of pictures of the baby and get great stuff. I'll think, oh, five, four oh, of these bad. are blurry or whatever, but then it'll auto awesome, auto auto awesome them, and you'll see kind of an interaction that you didn't catch. It, it, it does a really nice job. I like the one uh, of the Guardian. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lance. Well, I was going to say, I, I like the, I'm sorry. <laughs> you go, you go. I like go the uh, inadvertent auto awesomes, which you get occasionally. Uh, Andy Anako, um, uh had one, um, uh, he was walking by a fire uh, station or something. And I guess as a matter of course, let me see if I can find it. Here it is. As a matter of course, he, he takes a number of images and uh, it's a, the fire trucks aren't moving, but what you see is the reflections of people nice. going by. Oh. That's cool. So there's cool. a lot of these yeah. that are very, they're kind of, kind of awesome. Yeah. And well, you would also, never have uh, known it. Richard Jingris is in, is in Northern Iceland right now. And he has some really nice ones of just streams. People love streams on Ottawa. Awesome. Idea. I'm well. and I did, I, we had to show this in the show some weeks ago. I did a, a neon sign, a flashing neon sign in London. Yeah. There, oh, that yeah. was another one. Yeah. Is it G I N G R A S S? Um, yes. Pronounced Jingress. Jingress. I was... think he'd be consistent about his G's, but he's not. <laughs> he should talk to like the GIF he's guy. The, he's mm. the GIF fight embodied in a person. <laughs> One name. One name. One name, and it's all there. Uh, moving on. Let's see. <laughs> Did you see? <laughs> Do you? Does anybody have Siri? Oh, I I didn't get a chance. To, this is a great story. I didn't get a chance to Response try it out myself. Glass. I've heard it. No, I've had it actually. Uh, Jeff Needles, who is an iPhone bigot, used to be our intern here. He's gone now, thank God. Uh, <laughs> would do. He kept doing this. So <laughs> so if you say OK Glass to Siri, it says a number of different things. Stop trying to strap me on your forehead. It won't work. <laughs> Just so you know, I don't do anything when you blink at me. Glass, I think you've got the wrong assistant. Good on Apple for throwing that stuff in. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Sense of humor. Aww. Love it. Don't say okay, Glass, to Siri. She doesn't like it. <laughs> Little snippy about that. Um, remember when we talked about Larry Ellison saying, uh, I li I, I, he said, I like Larry Page. He's a nice guy. But they, and... They don't know it's not evil, but they stole Java from us. Um, Eric Schmidt on Google Plus had a little, little something to say. Here are the facts, he says. Um, Google didn't just take Oracle's stuff. It's not my opinion. It's the judgment of a U.S. district court. The court ruled that the copyright could not be used to block others from using the structure, sequence, and organization of APIs. This actually was a very famous case mm -hmm. about APIs the ruling protects This is the one where the judge had had uh, coded yeah. a very simple class, right? No, right. Yes. Yep. He wrote uh, what was it a sort or something I can't remember. Yeah, sort yeah. or number, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ruling protects a principle vital vital in innovation rights Eric Schmidt, you cannot copyright an idea as you can a method of operation or a, like a method of operation. No one can copyright the idea of adding two numbers together. Um, so there you go. I think that kind of flattens it. But, yeah, he's uh, right, and Larry's wrong. Which right, isn't but Charlie Rose, again, an example. Charlie Rose is a general purpose reporter, but you wouldn't expect him to say, but remember in 2012 the judge said you cannot copyright an API. <laughs> Jive in with Jarvis. Who just says things. Like, he just says things and, you know, <laughs> right. you're expected to believe right. it. Right. It's like a politician, basically. you got to fact check him. So this is uh, uh, Jarvis and Lionel Hampton and the King Cole Trio. What the hell? Is this some fan of yours, Abdul Jabbar X? Somebody sent this to me. No, somebody just sent this to me out of nowhere. Uh, so uh, this is like Farfagnugan or whatever that other reggae thing. Here we go. 
Listen, everybody. Jarvis with Jarvis. Jarvis with Jarvis. So Jarvis must be some guy. No, it was some woman who had the show. Oh, it was a show. Show. I like it. I should make that my, my ringtone. Yeah. yeah. Jarvis with Jarvis. Yeah, this is your theme song. I like it. Oh, it was a tribute to Los Angeles disc jockey Al Jarvis. I don't hear the xylophone a lot anymore. Was that your dad, Al Jarvis? No, 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 no. Those are vibes, man. The, the lyrics are... don't call that a xylophone. xylophone. That's vibes. It's just like a xylophone. What is the difference between vibes and a xylophone? I hope I never know. <laughs> I never heard of a vibe until just this like I, like I never want to know what twerking is. I think... <laughs> oh, okay, I can show you that. I think the vibe... A xylophone, I think, uses a wooden mallet, and vibes right. uses a softer mallet, something like that. Okay. I don't know. Point taken. A xylophone is what you see in a marching band. Isn't Tony Stark's assistant named Jarvis? Ah. Oh. Yes. Uh, the suit, yes. Mm. All right, enough of jiving with Jarvis. Did you see Elon Musk is building one of those? Um, no. Hand activated. No. You didn't see that? This was one of the best moments probably on the internet last week. I think it was on the weekend. Um, he said on Twitter that he was building a motion activated holographic design tool and then john favreau the, the producer of iron man responded to him on twitter and said you mean like the one in iron man <laughs> and elon musk said yeah exactly like that i liked it so much i'm building one great idea <laughs> <laughs> it's just it was the nerdiest moment probably great twitter yeah. moments incredible you've seen yeah. you've seen the great account uh, uh bored elon musk it said we'll yes. post yes. video. Oh, that, yeah, good. yeah. But this is so, straight out of board Elon Musk. No, it Elon is awesome. tweets we'll post video next week of designing a rocket part with hand gestures, then immediately printing it in titanium. In titanium, exactly. That guy <laughs> is Tony Stark. We figured out how to design rocket parts with just hand movements through the air. Now I need a high frame rate holograph generator. Anyone? <laughs> Anyone got an extra one? Later? Anyone? <laughs> Oh, God, it must be good to be the king. Can, can you loop it down to me? Hyperloop it. Yeah, hyperloop it. Well, hyperloop it. <laughs> I'm ready for the hyperloop. I'm thinking bathroom problems with the hyperloop. <laughs> no, no, no. That's the whole point. Before you have to pee again, you're there. 35 minutes, you're in yeah, L.A. Yeah. You can go a half an hour, Jeff. Come you're a on. younger man. <laughs> really? Can't even go half an hour. I found I can no longer yeah, sit I... through the entire show, the four-hour shows we do here at Twit. <laughs> so, but uh, what do you do? I get Should up in the middle of the, the show. Technology? Oh, I did okay. it on Sunday. No, I did it on, or no, I did it yesterday on the Mac Break Weekly. What I do is I try to <laughs> launch a conversation about something that I know is just going to go, right? <laughs> and then like you these, run to the back. And then I go. Yeah. What if it doesn't go? It didn't. And uh, and uh, <laughs> Renee Ritchie just stopped talking. And oh, and all Chad could do was switch to my chair empty. <laughs> you need a code word or something. like I do. Uh, yeah, you need, uh, you need you insert you need into the word. conversation so that everybody knows. Uh, if you were talking. Elon Musk, you'd build a robot of yourself. Well, if I really, if I were smart, I'd stop drinking nonstop coffee and water during these shows. That would probably help. You could probably hook a catheter up to that chair or something. Oh, easy. Yep. Easy, easy. Saying. I think there's a little holder for it. Right? There are methods. The when you have a Dr. Pal. Evil chair, it's got all sorts of special features. That or astronaut this diapers. This week in P. <laughs> what are you looking at? Are you looking up that? Are you looking it up, aren't you? Catheterize my host. Um... <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's. I'll tell you what. Let's take a break. Come back with the change log. Uh, so, uh, musicians, tippinists, please get your uniforms on. We're about to put you to work for the Google change log. But first, a word from our friends at 99designs.com. Help me out here. Help me out. We are we're ready to do uh, something new, something fun, something exciting. We always go to the artists at 99designs for our like our T-shirts, our unique stuff. They have. There are at last count. 246,320 designers waiting. It's a very crowded waiting room, waiting for you to pitch a design, to launch what they call it a design contest, right now at 99designs.com. 
They do logo design, web design. They even do app design. Currently, there are two, over 2,000 contests going on. Uh, the payments last month to designers was $1.8 million. 99 Designs brings great, talented designers together with people who just need a little design sense for their apps or their landing page or their menus. or They even do vehicle wraps. This is what, you know, so we're debating. Lisa really wants to buy a billboard on the 101 for Twit. I said, don't buy a billboard. How much is that? It's some, you know, ungodly amount of money. And I said, for that amount of money, we could wrap cars. You could have 50 cars drive around Twitmobiles all over the all over Silicon Valley. We'll get the 99 Designs to design them. If you want to know more, I'll tell you what. Here's what you do. Go to 99designs.com slash twig. 99designs.com slash T-W-I-G. And uh, you can sign up, launch your design contest, and you'll get a free power pack. That's a $99 value. It'll give you more designer time and attention. They'll bold, highlight, and feature your design product in the 99 Designs Marketplace, which means you'll get 185% more designers. It says so right here. 185% more. 99 Designs. Valerie Johnson of Big Feet Pajama Company says, when you hire one designer, you're stuck with their aesthetic, their concept. With 99 Designs, you get designs from many different people. You work with those designers to refine it. You pick your final design. And you get a great deal. They get a great job. It's 99designs.com slash twig to find out more. Now, there are a lot of examples on the website you can see. This offer ends in six days, 23 hours, six, 59 minutes, and six seconds. They put a countdown clock at the top. Look at that. Hurry! <laughs> hurry! 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 Over. Hurry! Hurry! <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen... Drummers, timpanists, flautists, horn blowers. It's time for the change log. The Google change log. And now here's Jin Penny. I'll stretch this out so Leo can run to the back. Good, I'm going to leave right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Google releases the Chrome 30 beta for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android. Uh, the Chrome beta lets you right-click or long press on an image and search for it via your default uh, search provider. So a li little bit easier search by image. All the people who do the Catfish show will, will really appreciate that. Uh, Chrome beta for Android has received new, new gestures. So you can swipe across the top toolbar, the, the, um, the Omni box, basically. If you, you can swipe across the top toolbar to switch tabs. Uh, you can drag vertically down to, from the toolbar to get into the, to a tab switcher view as well. And you can drag down from the menu in order to expand it versus just tapping on it. So some nice uh, new gestures in the Chrome beta for, for Android. Uh, in Google search, Google's improved definitions in search. So if you do a search that's uh, to define a word, so if you do uh, define uh, fortuitous, for example, they'll get that one box result. In the one box, you'll see now uh, the new things there is sample sentences that highlight how the word is used and synonyms. There's also a translate dropdown. So you can choose a language, translate the word directly uh, from the one box, and then once you choose a language, every Subsequent definition search you do from there will automatically translate into that language that, that you chose. This is heaven. This is great. It's a, it's mm. a, it's this is really really nice. And that that chart of like use of the word over time is also amazing. Yeah. Great Fantastic. great for word geeks. Yeah yeah. I went to Catholic school, so the nuns beat it in my head that when you find a word that you don't know, you look it up. And I actually do after all these years. I'm almost forty. I still do it. I love uh, data but, geeks. That's really yeah. what these guys are. They're just data geeks. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they are. But that, yeah, that one box. It, it, I loved it when I'm Google concerned. got the define, where you could type define colon and then the word. I used, yeah. I used that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but so actually, cool. you don't. It's it's not even you don't have to use the colon anymore. You can just do define mm. space. That's great. Uh, and then the word. So it's a little, it's a little, um, it's a little more natural. Uh, Google Now has also updated. Uh, speaking of cards, they've updated with car rentals, concert tickets, and a few other uh, oh. tricks. Uh, so, if you're traveling and you have car rental receipt or concert concert tickets uh, confirmation in your in your box in your Gmail inbox, you'll get the show those cards in Google Now. Uh, public transit cards have updated, so it'll no now will notify you when the last train home leaves and the location that you are. Really good, also for traveling. Um, and you can check NCAA scores. They've got a new football card for that 
And um, let's see. Oh, they've also got a couple of uh, new new features. If you look up uh, an artist uh, or or any sort of media, music or TV or, or movies, they've got a new uh, remind me button on the card, which means that Google yeah. now will notify you when your favorite band or TV show or author releases something new. And uh, oh. there's a new TV card, which I haven't actually had a chance to try. But Leo, you said your smart yeah. TV. Yeah. Uh, showed you this. Google Now. Uh, no, Google Now did it. It was so weird. I, I opened Google Now. It says, I see you have a Panasonic Viera on the network. Would you like to listen uh -huh. to whatever? Would you like me to listen to what you're listening to, watching? And I'll mm -hmm. tell you more about it. And I said, Amazing. wow. What? <laughs> yeah, so it'll figure out what you're watching and then show you information yeah. about what's on TV. Which Here's another one that uh, you didn't mention, but it's kind of weird, is that for some reason it's now giving me updates on people's commute. So I have circled somebody named Nathaniel Mosher. I don't even know who he is. Nathaniel Mosher has allowed you to see updates on his commute. Interested in updates on his commute? And I can say yes, and it's going to tell me the how his commute is going. The, so, really? so it says it says he's at work right now. So, so he yeah. must be sharing his location yeah. with you. Which I am too, and I think people are getting this too. Leo would like to share about me. Leo would. Pull, yeah. But why would I care about somebody else's commute? They mentioned they were going to do this, but I, I just still don't understand what. I can't imagine caring about anyone except my wife's commute, but Maybe that that's would be useful. I mean, that would be useful. I would love yeah. Google now to say, hey, uh, you yeah. know. So maybe it'll just keep her. offering me people. Uh, she's going to be late. Right. Yeah, she's going to be late, stuck in traffic. I love Google now. now Before the show, I was singing In the Mood, and Google now has given me three different versions right. of In the Mood, a card saying... You know, oh, you were looking at it in the mood. Here's, here's. No, Leo, some... please, no, don't play. <laughs> but I just think that that's really great. I don't. I'm sorry, but I just love this. It I don't great. find it intrusive at all. It's it, creepy. It, it me out of first. It's it me out of first, but now I'm like, I love smart. it. Like it. More. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great. It just, it just surprised me at first. I, I done a search for Palm Springs. I was looking, and then, and then suddenly Google Now was giving me directions, was telling me, oh, to, you know, about an hour, or two hours, light traffic. Yes. I was like, what? Yes. So it's, so it surprised me. But now I'm like, oh yes, and, and you know, you can swipe a card away if it's, if it's not relevant. They mm -hmm. need to get a better way of letting me know, because you forget to look at Google Now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I, the widget on your on your home screen. I keep the widget on my home screen, not, which I really like. Oh, you do. All right. Mm -hmm. It takes mm -hmm. up so much space. I don't want it to be on my home. Don't screen. you get notifications on the yeah. on the uh, Moto with that? Oh, Did you set that up. Notifications. I don't know on the home screen. Notifications. <laughs> I need a notification. Although uh, you know, Google now misparsed something in my inbox that made it think that I was traveling to Switzerland. Yes. yes. So I was getting I tips on like what hotel I should check oh, no. in in Switzerland. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I have, I don't I, know why this happened, but I just too. same thing happened to me. <laughs> what? Something went wrong. Uh, it was like though. it thought I was going to like yeah, Lausanne or somewhere. Yeah. So like, I don't know why you think it's that. It's Google telling you to expand your horizon. Yeah. Hey. Maybe it's aspirational. Maybe it's actually trying <laughs> to encourage you. We, f we feel to you would enjoy a trip to Switzerland right now. Wouldn't you rather <laughs> be need in a Zurich break. right now? Well, what Leo, happens you when need a Syrian electronic army to... like hacks Google now? Forget DNS records. What, 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 you know, when, they're, when they're sending Google now uh, reminders. How would you like to visit Syria right now? <laughs> Say yes or yes. What? <laughs> What? Your commute what? will take 11 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm really looking forward to seeing what Google Now uh, does as I travel around Europe. Oh, um, mm -hmm. that's going to be a bit, uh, yeah. that's going to be a great fascinating. experience. Yeah. It's yeah. fascinating. And I uh, I, I bought so a big air... package of data from AT&T, an 800 megabyte package of data just cuz I wanted to keep this on. Yeah. The airline I, thing I... was the most useful. I mean, does it put me, the barcode was... of your check-in up? Yeah, when you get it near does. the airport it goes you can... and yeah, you just, they just it just scan pops it. up. Love that. So they can just scan it, and it will tell you. It told me my flight was delayed. It told me there was traffic on the way to the airport. I mean, it was, and that alone was worth, you know, yeah. was so worth the cost of all the data. Yeah, but you have to use Gmail to get any of this advantage, of course. Yeah, it gets it. Yeah. yeah, it gets it from Gmail. My wife was traveling, and she had sent me her itinerary via Gmail. So, so, so Google now was telling me, That's "Oh, so this cool. flight is leaving then." And then she, whatever, her flight got delayed, and she had to reschedule. So she sent me her new itinerary, and now was smart enough to overlay those cards with the new mm -hmm. with the new flights. Um, and said, you know, hey, you should be leaving for the airport now. Basically, <laughs> like it figured out that I was doing the pickup. It was really, it's really great. It's really great. It's really useful. Okay, one more item in the change log, and this, this one's for Jeff. Uh, Chrome OS users gain immersive mode and more in the stable channel upgrade. 
Uh, so Jeff, you might have to explain what, what immersive mode is. From what I understand, it's like full screen on crack. I didn't get a chance to take grip break, break out my pixel and, and get Yeah, it just a, takes away every bar and every everything. And it's and it's nice. Uh, um, and I, I, I like it. The problem is that you have to turn back on to get, you have to do something to get the, yeah. you know, the, the address bar back. But, but there are certain times, so I don't use it all the time, but there are certain times when you really want to watch something or look at something and get a sense of it. Or take it. By the way, take a screenshot. Oh, that's oh, that must be nice for screenshots. Yeah, I oh, like geez. how on Android the the address bar just kind of slides up, uh, yeah. and you don't see it while you're scrolling. I feel that's like on the Pixel new, right? that would be useful as well, or particularly on the Pixel when you're that's a good scrolling. idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's all I got for the change log. Play the dumbs drums. Dumbs. <laughs> the dumbs. Dum dum. <laughs> dum 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 dum. Different dum, dum. <laughs> It's played with a velvet mallet. Uh, thank you, Gina Trapani, for the Google change log. New stuff at Google. Google.com, of course, because this is the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King's uh, March on Washington. Has, I think, a, a beautiful Google doodle. Um, can you see it? They also did a special media thing oh, yeah. to watch the speech, but I couldn't get it. It was broken. Did they? Oh. Yeah, if you go to the Google, uh, I think the Google blog, they have something about it. It looked, it looked gorgeous, but I couldn't make it work. It's kind of ironic because uh, I understand that President Obama speaking about the I Have a Dream speech says it belongs to all of us. Ironically, it doesn't. The rights no. prohibit oh. it from... <laughs> yeah. The estate of Martin Luther King is very clear it does not belong to all of us. No. <laughs> oh, God, save us from rights. Rights issues. Plus, you know... If you think that Martin Luther King really can look down upon this, he must be saying to his heirs, you can't take the money with you. It's the ideas that live right. on. Mm, you think? That's a mouthful, Jeff. <sighs> you think that is a mouthful. Mm. <sighs> I always... that's, what, that's what the internet has probably taught me more than anything else. Yes. And you know, my, my friend Jay Rosen says that he's never um, made a mistake by revealing an idea he has. It's always worked to his best. Yes, and it's so it's so counterintuitive, and it's so hard for so many people to get. But uh, just try it; it works so well. Although I think Jesus said it best when he said, "Cast your bread upon the waters, and it will return to you a thousandfold." Did he not? That's wow, just casting that's your bread upon the waters. For us. Hey, it's two thousand years deep. old. It's not a new idea, kids. We were just talking about twerking. I'm, I'm getting like <laughs> ideological whiplash. I know, this just got really deep. <laughs> well, the My goodness. The, a lot of ideas Jesus had are good ideas, <laughs> never really got implemented. He needed uh, better well, marketing or something. He did his best. He oh, by the way, best. speaking of twerking, in the rundown in the chat on the right, I put in, uh, oh, is it there anymore? Uh, Nick Kristoff, legendary New York Times columnist. Hold on a second. <laughs> he was uh, on Working. He was he was trying to figure out what twerking is, and so you'll see this in one second. There you go. Oh, no. Oh, yes. No, Fine. don't. No, no. Oh, oh. We can't unsee this. I don't want twerking. Actually, Jesus didn't say cast your bread upon the waters. It's from Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Thank you, chat room. God said it. God said it. Well, mine's not working. The no, Hebrews said it. Good. What is this going to be? What are we going to see if uh, Chris? It's, it's not worth it. Right. Never mind. It's a I vine. It's a vine about a twerking. Thing. This is, by the way, my problem with Vine. I see this happens to me every time I go to Vine. Won't play. It yep. doesn't play. It's like guys, I'm loading. I'm loading. Find that what, all the time. What is that? What is that? Is that a plug? Is it Flash? What is the? It's their servers. Happen? Their servers uh, suck. Their servers suck. Okay. You know who owns Vine? <laughs> <laughs> Although yeah, I would Twitter's. thought Twitter would have solved this by now. Uh, yeah, I think that Twitter, I thought that Twitter had fail whaled its way to site stability generally. Yeah. But every time I try to play a vine, it doesn't work. Never mind. It's not even that good. <laughs> so here's Aww. the here's the whole verse. This is Ecclesiastes 11. It's the Old Testament. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a portion to seven or even to eight, for you know not what disaster may happen on earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. In other words, Amen, brother. put it out there. Don't worry about what you're going to get back. If amen. You, amen. Hallelujah. Preach, 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 preach. 
You know who preached great? Did you Martin see? Uh, oh, I loved this. Uh, the speech uh, that um, what's his name gave. <laughs> This is another thing, along with peeing a lot. This is another thing that comes up comes up as you get older. Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. See, Matthew knew. Kevin Got Spacey it. gave at the Edinburgh uh, TV Festival about exactly this, which is yeah. there's a huge opportunity here, and greed is preventing yep. it from, you know. And his point was it doesn't matter what the platform is or what the package is or what the machine is or what the thing you're watching it it on is it's all about the content right yep. so good hmm. so I, good i could play i'll play about netflix or uh well he's it starts TV. with the conversation yeah, about uh house of cards House of cards. okay um but it really is let me let me find it for you um no, it, it's, it's just it, a big deal it's heavy stuff it, it's a big deal it's so good. This was a YouTube uh, event. This is the uh, Edinburgh Television Festival was uh, a YouTube event. If I can, well, I see YouTube on the podium. By the way, well, 800... That's ironic because this is a television... Podcast. I know. Well... And YouTube horns in on it's, it. It's a message that YouTube wouldn't mind uh, spreading to the rest of the world, I think. I'm going to jump... Uh, you, you should watch the whole thing. I'm, I, I, it's too long for us to... We'll give it short shrift, but... Uh, it's if you watch the whole five minute piece, you'll love it. But let me TV jump. Or Excellent. Game of Thrones on their computer. Here, let me it's let me skip old, back a little bit. Here but we go. For kids growing up now, there's no difference watching Avatar on an iPad, or watching YouTube on a TV, or watching Game of Thrones on their computer. It's all content. It's just story, and the audience has spoken. They want stories. They're dying for them. They're rooting for us to give them the right thing. And they will talk about it, binge on it, carry it with them on the bus and to the hairdresser, force it on their friends, tweet, blog, Facebook, make fan pages, silly gifs, and God knows what else about it. Engage with it with yes. a passion and an intimacy that a blockbuster movie could only dream of. And all we have to do is give it to them. The prize fruit is right there, shinier and juicier than it's ever been before. So it will be all the more shame on each and every one of us if we don't reach out and seize it. And I want to leave you with the words of a man as good as any to address the nexus of commerce and art, Mr. Orson Welles, who once said, I hate television. I hate it as much as peanuts. But I just can't stop eating peanuts. <clears throat> Thank he is you. so good. That's Kevin Spacey yes. speaking at the Edinburgh TV Festival. <laughs> and urging broadcasters and everybody else, this is The Telegraph, by the way, published that video, uh, Jeff, um, the, to, to just, you know, get it out there. Don't worry about channels and uh, control. Get it out there. People want this stuff. And if you give it to them, they will celebrate it in a way that you will, you will reap the rewards. It's interesting. Like, that was really good. He didn't. He he could have gone a step further. He was making. A, he was separating the creators from the audience a little bit. Mm. You know, they want it from us. Uh, he should have. He could have That's gone a, a little point. bit of a step further and 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 acknowledge yeah. that the audience creates around the things that you create That's as well. Right. That it's complete. I mean, he mentioned the silly gifts and the and the mashups and all that. Right. Uh, yep. But but you know, there's there, there's still that us and them look. Spacey has, you know, has earned his stripes, and I guess, you know, it makes sense that he has an us and them. He's he's reached a level that most, you know, entertainers and actors don't don't reach, but still a little bit of that us and them mindset there. Well, and that is, that really is he's old point. school. That he's old school. Yeah. He's, he's yeah. old school. They're yeah. just waiting for us to give right. them, you know. Right. Uh, but but yeah, no, he that was a good speech. I'm definitely gonna watch the whole thing. It's a big step forward. <laughs> the next step is to say, and we're all creators. Yep. See that with my two daughters all the time. The Tumblr addicts. Whenever they're watching a show. Whether it's you know Doctor Who or Teen Wolf or whatever, they discover the content through Tumblr. They share it through right. Tumblr. They they live blog TV shows and live tweet them. You know voluntarily, nobody's paying them to do this because they love these shows so much. They're so invested in it, and and the animated gifs and the and the you know all the stuff that's related to it, the fan fiction and whatnot, is just part of that experience. And meanwhile, record companies are suing uh, Larry Lessig yeah. for uh, for the use of a French band's hit single in a video that he gave uh, in an online uh, or that he made of an online uh, lecture for him for standing up too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the band. Also very happy. Who could forget the band Phoenix? 
and their 2009 hit Listomania. Listomania, I remember. It's a great yeah. tune. It's a movie too, right? Uh, he put it in a lecture. He used the music. Uh, the lecture was describing how people had used that song to create dance videos, you know, mashups and so forth. Uh, the Australian record company that owned the rights threatened to sue Lessig. He's countersued, actually pre-sued, in federal court, accusing it of abusing copyright laws and singling him out, even though his actions are fair use. EFF. Uh, Good for Larry. Do, carrying the, doing the water. And I'm also water. glad because, because Larry's kind of tried to move on past copyright into corruption and money. And he really is all about such. campaign finance reform right now. Right, but mm. but, he, but I, I, I'm glad he couldn't resist to go back and fight another war. <laughs> well, but I also think the reason he's in his, he, what he realized in this fight, this copyright fight, was until we get the money out of the pockets, the corporate money out of the pockets of our, uh, our legislators, we're never going to get a change. So right. the first thing to do is, is to eliminate the, the malign influence of corporations in uh, government. Which is right on. Um, uh, yeah, if you probably John Perry Barlow's acceptance to the. Should we play another game. speech? Yeah, what the heck? This is the guy uh, who uh, does that. Uh, what was it? The rights of uh, man. The. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, should I play the whole thing? Uh, it's pretty short. I haven't seen I it. Here well, we go. John Perry Barlow, the great. Minutes. Who, by the way, we've had on Triangulation. He's a wonderful guy. Love hilarious. him. His accepted speech to his induction into the. Internet Hall of Fame. Of the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Please welcome to the stage John Perry Barlow. Yeah. I'd say I was humbled by this, uh, but I usually reserve that for when my car's been towed. <laughs> I'm very deeply honored, uh, surprised, and and gratified. Uh, I am a member of another Hall of Fame, which is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And let me tell you, there is a lot more narcissism involved. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things I really love about this is that I'm looking at people whose ideas were the important thing and who, who knew that and who knew the elegant solution when they saw it and caused it to be born. And... And I'm grateful to all of you because, you know, I care a lot about the, the architecture of the Internet. You can't endow liberty in the absence of the ability to take it away. And so it has to be part of the architecture. And each and every one of you has been an enormous part of creating a system that is difficult to shut up. Hey. <laughs> I am very profoundly grateful to you for all of that. And finally, I want to I want to accept this uh, also on the behalf of some people that I hope are one day members of the Internet Hall of Fame. And they are Edward Snowden, Bradley Manning, and Julian Assange. Thank wow! You. Great, great. There you go. Uh, John Perry Barlow, he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because he uh, wrote lyrics for Grateful Dead songs. He's a Montana rancher, and as they mentioned, the founder of EFF, and really a great guy. His declaration yeah. of the independence of cyberspace, Jeff's been trying to get him to do a dramatic oh. reading of that since, <laughs> as long as I've known him. <laughs> he actually, I don't know if you watched that section when I asked him about it, he's, he kind of repudiated it. He said, well, I wrote that a long time ago. Some things are different. And then I, I went up to him again and asked, you know, no, he, he still kind of believes it, but I think he, he was over the top. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's so mm -hmm. delightful about it. It is. You wanted him to, like, read it as a firebrand. I oh, declare. Yeah. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my preacher voice. Um, I think we, anything else you want to say before we uh, go to our uh, tool? To, we got to get Jeff, uh, Gina out of here in a little bit. Our tool and tip and number of the week. And Mr. Matthew Ingram, always good to have you from GigaOM. If you've got any tips or tricks or anything you'd like to share with us we can let you do that too uh, let's start with gina trapani her tool or tip of the week oh, i found this one on lifehacker this is actually a facebook tip uh if your news feed is overrun with stuff that you don't really care i uh, care about Facebook has offered a tool that will help you organize your friends. Uh, basically what this does, if you go to facebook.com 
slash friends slash organize and Chad or Leo, if you do this, this this will show a list of your friends. So uh, if you're concerned about that, maybe don't, don't do it on air. Uh, but you can go to facebook.com slash friends slash organize. And basically Facebook will say to you, hey, here's a list of people that you haven't interacted with in a really long time. Would you like to add them to your acquaintances list? Oh, uh, wow. Now people who are on your acquaintances list are uh, quieter in newsfeed. You don't hear from them as much. And I think really just only the posts from your acquaintances that really kind of pop or have a lot of interactivity show up in your newsfeed. So, and it's pretty smart. I did this, I did this and it was several screens. It was like, hey, people on this list, you haven't interacted with them in a long time. Now, some people I was like, oh, hey, I actually still want to keep these on my friends list. Uh, and I would like to see every post in my newsfeed. But there are actually quite a few that I thought mm, I can, you know, relegate them to acquaintances, acquaintances they don't know. If I'm not interacting with their posts or conversing with them much, then then it's a little little quieter in your newsfeed. So I thought it's pretty it's a pretty smart tool, and apparently it's not they're not Facebook isn't really promoting it or there isn't a link to get to it in Facebook. But if you just go to facebook.com/friends/organize, it will uh, get you started. So you'll get these are just people that you haven't had back and forth with in some way or liked. Yeah, or... I think they're people who you haven't liked, who you haven't had back and forth with, who you just haven't messaged with. I imagine it's just people that you haven't interacted with in a while. Uh, and, uh, you know, do you, so you can uncheck most everybody them on Facebook. Huh? So for me, that's going to be most everybody on Facebook. Well, yeah, right. Thing, I'm getting right? a lot like, of people who are actually like Tom Merritt, who are actually, you know, friends. Uh, but I guess I just don't interact with them on Facebook. <laughs> However, there are also a lot of people who really I, are acquaintances. So by moving them into the acquaintances category, uh, you, I'll you see, see less of them less in, of in them. your newsfeed. Which is, so it's true. If you don't use Facebook a lot, basically everybody is going to be listed, right? right. <laughs> uh, so you can right. check and uncheck the people that you want to move. But it's a nice way to kind of, I mean, because so rarely do we, you know, or so rarely do I take the time to organize my friends list. I, you know, I have better things to do. But like people, people who I, you know, interacted with or worked with two years ago, who I haven't spoken to in a while, I don't necessarily want to unfriend them, but maybe I don't want to hear about their dog. Who's this Chad Johnson? I don't want to hear his stories about his cats. Let me just <laughs> oh, I uncheck Chad him. Oh, I want Chad Johnson's <laughs> redhead in my news feed, <laughs> even if I haven't liked his stuff in a while. <laughs> but it, it's a nice kind of automatic way to, to prune things without having to go through the list manually. This is good. It's taken me five pages. Uh, there seem to be some organization because that whole page was all people I work with. So there, there is some organization uh, to yeah, this. Yeah, if you put people like on a list, like if you made a twit list, I'll oh, say, hey, go through the is, list. These are the people, yeah, Got these it. are the people from the twit list who you haven't interacted with Got in a while. It. Do you want to add them to acquaintances? Yeah, good. Uh, this is a very useful uh, little thing here. I'm doing it right now. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, uh -oh, Jeff Jarvis. Goodbye, Leo. I'm probably off your list. No, no, I <laughs> no, I love hearing your stuff, <laughs> but there are people that I just I don't even really know who the hell this person is. So. <laughs> I think I'm going to make them an acquaintance, you know? I had a couple of like, ooh, what, when? Yeah. Should I keep my accountant on my acquaintance list or my friends list? Always so difficult to know. Mm. Mm. How compelling are your accountant status updates? <laughs> <laughs> he's a big question. drunk, so he's actually quite fun. If he's entertaining. Oh. <laughs> I, I went through something even more radical. I started with, with that type of tool and then decided instead of moving a lot of these people into a list, I would just get rid of them completely. And I, I think I got rid of about 80% of my yeah. uh, Facebook network. And then I wrote about why I did that. And it's it made Facebook a lot more usable. Yeah, you really should. It's a good idea to prune, I think. I, I've heard that from a lot of people. I just, I worry about hurting people's feelings. Maybe I'm being too nice. Yeah, do they know? And I did do that. And I did do that. I had to apologize to a few people. Really? People and knew? And I added a few people back. Yeah. Does it say Matthew just pulled you, pulled to just defriended you? How do they know? No, but they know. If they go back, if they go and look at their connections, ah, they can see that you're no longer, no longer connected or they can see that they're only now they're subscribed to you or following you instead of. This is probably why Facebook has this acquaintances feature, right? Yes. Mm. So you don't have to. a way to demote people is, without letting them know. Right. So you put somebody in purgatory without telling them. Yeah. Or That's too. also yeah. why there's the subscribe feature. Right. Exactly. I, I, hit the I hit the limit not on friends, but I had the total. I just would never say no to anybody. I just let it sit there. And so I got thousands were sitting yeah. there. And then I couldn't add, nobody could add me. And I let it sit there for like nine months when nobody could add me. And it was kind of nice. I do find <laughs> it um, odd. That it's like letting your voice mailbox thing. fill up. When yeah. I post a photo, it gets liked by 15 people with foreign names who I have never met. And I don't understand what is going on there. Right. Like they're subscribed to me, I guess. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just don't understand what Damn that's all. Damn furners. 
By the way, you're Canadian, so that means us, right? Yes, yeah. right. Okay. People with funny accents. <laughs> most, that's most of the damn yeah, world. Yeah, I was going to say, don't found a startup and apply to Y Combinator yeah, exactly. because yeah, that accent's yeah. way too I've, thick. If I say oot and a boot, oot no one boot. will fund me. By the way, I finished the whole process, and at the end it says, you've organized your friends. Now let them know how easy it is, and you can actually share this. I said, uh, nice tip from Gina Trapani on Twig, and I can share this on my Facebook timeline. So they are they are publicizing it in this fashion. Yeah. You can reshare oh, it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, uh, I'm so attention, my attention span is so short. I, I By screen three, I was like, I'll oh, get back got to this. There. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so done. Too many screens. I'm so done. So many screens. Hey, Matthew, did you want to share anything with us, a uh, tip or an idea or anything that you think people should know about? I do have one thing that I've, I've found incredibly useful um, on my Nexus is a, a weather app. And I know everybody has their own favorite weather app. And I know, you know, Everybody has is looking for specific things. This one's called Arcus, uh, A R C U S, and it uses Dark Sky. I don't know if you guys. Oh, have, I love Dark uh, Sky. Yeah. yeah, Dark Sky is pretty amazing. So uh, Arcus, I've found, it's you know it's not 100% accurate because no weather forecast is, but it's so granular. So you pull it up and it says, uh, light rain starting in eight minutes, uh, <laughs> lasting lasting for 12 minutes. You know, oh, it's I want not just, this. It's not just, oh, it's going to rain sometime today. It's like eight minutes from now, it's going to wow. start raining. Um, so it's, it's, I find it fascinating. You can get, and it pulls in data from basically every, you know, radar installation and weather map, and it just mushes them all together. And it's pretty amazing. I just installed it. Love yeah, that. Yeah, Cos Cosine and Arcus. I think I talked about this on Twig uh, or on AA. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great app. Uh, and they have it's a dollar ninety eight for the pro version, which I would guess is you know fewer ads more or stuff. something. More stuff. Always like more stuff. Jeff Jarvis, your number of the week. Just a minor one. Uh, a, a service called uh, Parsley, Parse.ly, um, put out a little report on the traffic to news sites. And the general presumption, I think, in recent years has been, oh, Facebook has over overcome everything, according to their sample set, which is the caveat. Uh, Google still uh, drives three times the traffic to news of Facebook. So as my German friends get all mad at Google, just remember, wow. you don't want to piss them off. That's Google <laughs> Search, not Google Plus? or Google, eating All Google Sites, all Google Sites. All Google Sites. It includes Plus, but it's probably mostly Search, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cool, that is a big difference. Look at that. I mean, like towering over everybody else. My uh, my tool of I have two tools. I'll give you two different uh, tools. One is of a, of all things an alarm clock, um, but it's just the coolest alarm clock I have ever uh, seen. It has a feature I've never seen before. It's called Timely, uh, and uh, you want it. You'll if you have multiple Android devices, you want to install it on all of them because when you set an alarm, it sets it on all your devices. So Ooh. sometimes I'm yeah. Sometimes I miss alarms. Uh, you're not going to miss it now because I've got, I've got, when, the, when my alarm goes off on my phone, it goes off. It has a timer, by the way, built in. It's also beautiful. I mean, it, you can modify the theme and so forth. It's free, but there's an in-app purchase. But when I set an alarm, it'll go off on uh, the other uh, devices that I have um, <laughs> attached with timely installed. So a Nexus 4, HTC One, Nexus 7. Uh, I don't know what that is, the Moto X. <laughs> So all so, of these go off at once. What's the thing you don't cool. know what so, it is? When you dismiss, uh, when you dismiss the alarm, or when you stop it, it also stops across devices. Yes, That's very a great nice. Idea. Isn't that a good idea? Alarm. A yeah, alarm. it's like fantastic. That. What's this called? It's called Timely. It's I got it on the screen here, Chad. Timely alarm clock. It's beautiful too. Looks great on, uh, and you can buy uh, different themes and so forth. I realized what that other device was. That was a Galaxy Note 8 phone, which I was reviewing. Uh, and I'm going to now remove from my managed devices since uh, somebody else has it. You know, the only thing is with it going off is the reason I, I do, I set it manually on more than one device because it acts as my snooze. Right. Mm. My, well, my double snooze. This has some really good snooze features, too. It's got an excellent, uh, it has a variety of uh, excellent uh, sounds for alarms. It's really kind of a, a neat little thing. I see it being awkward if you were traveling and you set the alarm on your phone <laughs> it would go off inside at home. your bed and all the stuff at home went off. Well, that's what happens when you're a single guy. You don't really care. <laughs> Good morning, home, empty home.
Why are we looking at all so about Android? They tested this on all about Android yesterday. Oh, you're kidding. And this is them showing it off that oh, when you snooze so it. Small world. When you snooze it on one device, it snooze snooze it, it on the other yeah, because they happen to have multiple devices yeah. with them at the yeah. time. So nice. he hits it, and then on the other device, it stops. I know that because like my alarm was going off all over the house the other day. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the Google Voice problem, too, right? Like, Google Voice yeah. rings, and, like, several of my phones Free ring. Device. My wife hates it. Yep. She's like, oh, why is... <laughs> why well, the worst is it's not really in synchron that? It's not synchronized, so it'll go off sooner on one phone than the Second other. Second later. Yeah. It lasts longer on some. It keeps ringing. And Good way to find your devices, though too right it is a good way <laughs> and now my now the, my computer started ringing like through hangouts my so my computer rings now right. and all my phone so it's it's awesome and this one is for gina i have one more thing for gina and um this is really ridiculous you use a case on your htc one i did i i wound up getting a case because I, I checked in there was a four square special and i got it for cheap uh so yeah it's this plastic spec but, case don't Although, you feel honestly, bad I doing think, it I do. I take it off. I take it off a lot because I, I actually I really believe in like just using the device. I love the device. You know, I want to feel it in my hand. I don't want to do the I whole know. condom thing. But you'd feel uh, even but... worse if you dropped it. Right. Exactly. So I bought a ridiculously expensive case. It's almost sixty bucks. It's called the Devil Case, Ooh. and um, I've seen it all over Google Plus. And I and I bought it. And what it is is this is a milled aluminum. So it, oh, it actually looks really slick. I mean, it's it feels like it belongs with the phone. It, but there is a there is a negative. It has tiny little screws that you have to... It comes with a screwdriver, which I've, I've put somewhere, and I now I've lost it. Uh, it comes with a tiny little screwdriver, and a, fortunately, a couple of extra screws, because I immediately lost it. So to get the case off, you literally have to unscrew it. It's, it it's, so it's kind of like a bumper. It's a bumper than, case, yeah, which is yeah. nice, because the back of the HTC One is beautiful. It is. It is. Um, so it's really about dropping it on the edge, and I have dropped my one on the edge, and it does ding. So... Yeah. And this is in a, it's probably not a practical case because it doesn't really protect anything. On the other hand, it's kind of cool. That's the devil a case. And yeah, I, got I, on. I scratched my one up here and it broke my heart. I know. It just broke my heart. I, I was like, no, it's the first car, like first time you scratch your brand new car. Yep. But it's okay. Now it's lived in. <laughs> when I went into an at and today to look at the uh, Moto X, don't worry, I'm not going to complain. Um, they had to put the, the burglar alarm thing on the screen so you could see that they had mm. scratched the glass. Oh. Uh, oh, not uh, good. It's like that Chromebook commercial where they were just destroying computers. It yeah. Hurt me. Don't let your dog lick your computer or your phone. I haven't seen that. <laughs> Is it Chromebook uh, it, commercial? It, it, it was an old one. It was for the old, oh, uh, you know, the Samsung. Babies old, were standing oh, on it. Remember, they all, it was right, like, right, it's for right. everybody Tropic in your family. It's so cheap, and... you don't care. Oh, right, that right, cheap. right. Not, not my Pixel. That's not the case. No. Yeah, no, not, certainly not with the Pixel. Hey, thank you all uh, for doing this show. It's so much fun. Matthew Ingram, I cannot thank you enough for taking time out from your lake house to be with us. I'm happy to. Thanks for having me. It's so great to have you. GigaOM.com, we were saying before the show that you are so prolific, so many great articles, and the week is only halfway done from Matthew Ingram. <laughs> so check it out. I think next time Matthew's on, we have to end the show with him jumping into the lake on the on on the rope. Can you do that? Just to, well, here's what I want you to do, Matthew. Sure. Turn the camera towards the lake. I want you to strip down <laughs> as you run towards the lake. In your tidy whities down to whatever you feel comfortable, and then jump in the lake. And we'll end the show that way. What do you think? I'll give it some thought. <laughs> Your headset try. doesn't go that far, Matthew. I try. That, that's, <laughs> you can take the headset off. Yeah, okay. Don't jump in the lake with the headset on. Uh, we got Jeff Jarvis. He's from the City University of New York where he teaches journalism. He's also the author of Public Parts and What Would Google Do and is a blogger at buzzmachine.com. Don't forget Gutenberg the Geek. Anything else you want to plug? No, that's, that's it. It's a pretty good range of stuff. He'll be looking at a Moto X at an AT&T store near you. <laughs> Buy the damn there, thing. Looking perplexed. Buy the damn thing. You'll be glad you did. I, well, the thing is, I already bought it. Oh. I have it. Open the damn thing. But you now you didn't do the Moto Maker. You could have had it color. Yes, I did. Yes, oh, you I did. did. Oh, so yeah. you already got it. You already got it. Navy blue with a nice uh, oh. uh, silver accent. You know that's kind of cool. You can send it back even though you've customized yeah. it. I didn't engrave it or anything. Or not that you, you can could. still send it back. I think. I don't think they really? care. Well, I think the engraving washes right off. <laughs> it's a useful feature. <laughs> Navy blue, really? Navy blue oh. with a silver accent? That's kind of nice. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently, uh, apparently, Leo Matthew just disagrees. 
nautical. All right, pull up, pull up the, pull up the, the thing. What would you get? What color would you get? I, uh, I, I, I got red, with, uh, with also with the gray accent. Motomaker.com, but I'm not going to buy it because I don't want another AT and T phone. I have far too many as it is. I'm waiting for the unlocked Moto Maker because mm. I want and I want a wooden case. Don't you want a wooden case? See, I didn't like most of the colors. No, I didn't either. I think I got cherry. No, that's not. I didn't get cherry. That's horrible. I am so boring. I would totally just get black. Black. Yeah, me black too. Black or white. Yeah. Well, the other thing though is that the the plain old. Oh, I got black crimson. And white cases. Here's the one I got: crimson, which is very lovely. And then I got a uh, the front. I got white. Okay, and then the metallic silver for the trim. Is that now? That's beautiful. I did. I did the blue with a metallic silver. Yeah, that's okay. That's nice. The thing about the red is, is, isn't it like cars don't car, like red cars have a much higher rate of being stolen? I feel like the red would really sort of call <laughs> attention to, to the phone. You're more likely to get a ticket. <laughs> You're speeding with that phone, <laughs> <tickets> buddy <laughs> boy. Then I don't know why you could pick your wallpaper, which I think is really kind of silly because I'm not going to use any of these anyway. But yeah, that was clearly just let's throw oh, this in to make it seem see. really custom. They I do like this language. though that you they will they will put your Google account on it. You still have to put the password in, so it doesn't really save you that much time. Time, but A and B. Mm -hmm. If I sold the thing, speaking of which, they did they changed the, they expanded the language we talked about last week on the resale. Oh, they did. Okay. Oh, they did. To clarify it. That makes they sense. To clarify it. Good. So that was just the early adopter language. You can now you can now resell it. No, 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 no. They just. Uh, clarified the language more. No, it's still the case. You are allowed to sell it, but only what? You're allowed to give it to friends, but but you can't. If if you do sell it, they won't get the warranty. They won't get anything else. Yeah, we well, really don't want fine. you to sell this. We don't want you to sell it. Too bad. And what I do like, you can get matching in ear headphones. So you get the oh, crim. Fancy. See, schmancy, <laughs> schmancy, fancy. <laughs> but styling. I'm waiting for unlocked. <laughs> Ah, Gina Trapani is at smarterware.org. Think up act. No, just thinkup.com think up and uh, think to up do text.com. To do text.com. Yeah, great show today. A lot of fun. Thanks for coming Always on. Always a Matthew. pleasure. We're glad we got you out of here Thanks in the nick of time. Yes, thank you. Sorry about that again. Chad Johnson's our producer, pulls all the stories together, does a great job switching the Yay, board as well. Chad. Hey, Chad. Hey, Chad. Go team. Minion Fogarty coming up. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Uh, hey, Chad, by the way, you're an acquaintance, okay? Just keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll remember that. Just an acquaintance. Well, I did that anyway. to you, too. <laughs> hey! Nice. I'm not an acquaintance. I'm your boss. It's a Zing. Uh, no, we love Chad. Chad, of course, I want to see all his uh, all his updates. He's uh, He loves... Luckily, there's very he few of them. I am never on he Facebook. He loves his cat. That's about it. Um, no, you're right. I don't see your stuff on Facebook that often. Never. Me neither. Tumblr. My grandma's there. Hey, You're grandma. on Tumblr, though, right? He's Tum a young guy. He's probably all over the Tumblr. Yeah, I've been working on you Tumblr. You know what surprises me is his grandma's probably my age. <laughs> I no need comment. Some, I need, yeah, I know. It's true, isn't it, Jeff? Yeah, Our age. No, I need no. some I need some good Tumblrs to follow. My That's the thing about Tumblrs. You I, need to circle. You, I it's yeah, called a my circle. My Tumblr is so boring. You need to follow. Great. And you really want to follow some people because now they've put in-stream ads. And so mm. you're getting uh, posts from things that you don't want to see because mm. they're ads. Here's George Takei. He's worth following. Squirrel underpants. Blame Marissa. Yeah. Yeah, I do blame Marissa. Um <laughs> Oh, finally, we got Myrie, Miley Cyrus working there. Finally, you. in one of our shows. Thank God. I have not seen it. I do not want to see do it. Do not see. Do not want to see. Can't unsee. Here are it. the things you're missing on Tumblr. And this is who yeah, I follow. Oh, but that's today. a flying cat. Yeah. cat. yeah. Oh, it's a sushi, sushi cat. Sushi cat. That's sushi. Yeah. Um, oh. We got more cats. See, I'm following a few cat tumblers. We ought to um, get together and share our uh, tumblers. Can't not. That's just a good use of time. Right I there. found a really yeah. good one. I think it's called Zen Pencils. It's a cart He's a cartoonist who takes uh, quotes or verse and illustrates it with a comic. It's nice. really good. Mm. Let me see if I can scroll down and there's find some, him. There's some quite artistic stuff on there. There is. And there's a lot of porn, which really saves me a lot of money. <laughs> uh, that National Geographic, they're still doing it. Love it. Are we still on? Yes.
<laughs> That's what we do, Matthew. You can't tell when the show is. It, it never really ends. It just peters it's out. This thing on. <laughs> I actually got to run. I'm really All right, guys, everybody, thank you for joining us. We do this week in Google Wednesday afternoons, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 2000 UTC on Twitch.tv. Please stop by. And uh, if you can't watch live, you can always get it after the fact on the man audio and video available at twit.tv slash twig or wherever finer podcasts are aggregated, stored, and delivered to your device with a minimum of fuss. Please subscribe. See you next time. Wait.